Hello, welcome to Scratch Theory Printing. I'll be talking about tolerance just like this, fitting things into other things like this with the tolerance of your 3D printers. Let's scratch today's topic. So for 3D printing, if you are starting on 3D printing or so for 3D printing, tolerance is a really important thing in 3D printing. Most of the time for me personally, I would like to 3D print parts that fits together for functionality and just found things like this that fits together so that you will just be happy. For a long time now, I've been messing with tolerance, trying to 3D print stuff with tolerance and I couldn't really get the tolerance to fit as I would love to. I've been doing many 3D printed tolerance tests like for example Orca Slicer's tolerance test where it has 6 slots, I think it has 6 slots with 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0.1 and even 0 tolerance. You have like a little hexagon, you put it through each of those and it fits really well. So it's like hey my 3D printer can fit a 0.1 or sometimes it can even fit a 0 tolerance. That may be true in that test, but it will not transfer to real 3D printing like these parts or like functional parts that you are trying to, or functional parts that you are trying to do in your applications, your projects. So I just modeled these on Fusion 360 and 3D print them out and it fits really well as you can see here, you can go through it. I have to do two iterations of this piece because I made a hole right here and as you can see this one is a lot smaller than this one. So what I'm trying to do in this experiment is fitting 3D printed filaments in, in these holes like this so that it can go through here. If you like using filaments to go into holes like this and attach two pieces together for so that it can spin like this one for the example and I will explain the reason why this is important and cutting the bottom off. And now this part is in there, stuck in there and you can, it's not going to be the best example but it fits well and it works. But it's a little bit small so I cannot put my hand in there using this thing push it around yeah like that it's still a little bit tight but it works and then it, it's just really cool like that filament joint which I made a video about it I will leave a link down below if you want to check that out and I also 3d printed another piece like this so this also has a hole right there and this piece go inside here which can spin also this little cube here the hole is way too small and I cannot fit the filament in there well did I did I make this way too small a zero tolerance a zero millimeters tolerance nope all these parts has a circle diameter of 1.9 millimeters for all of them besides this one right here so this one has a 1.9 millimeters diameter circle and this one has a 2.1 millimeters diameter circle that's a really huge gap tolerance for this one so here's the reason why i think this one fits and this one doesn't fit this piece was printed like this and this piece was printing up like this which has the hole up here so the hole is printing upward and this one the hole is printing in the middle of the piece it's not printing like this. A while back I was experimenting with the first layer and I think this has to do with diameters with circles like this and or printing it vertical like this. Back then I was trying to experiment with the first layer because if you know and if you have a 3D printed parts laying around try feeling it on the side here you will know that you feel the first layer and the first layer is wider than the rest of your layers because on many 3D slicers usually has the widest width out of all the layers. So for example on Orca slicers the first layer is 0.5 millimeters width and then the rest of the layer is 0.42 millimeters. I try changing that to like 0 0.4, 0 0.4 or even 0 0.3. Sometimes I change it to 0 0.2. And what happened was I cannot get the first layer to stick at all because the width is way too small and it does not have enough surface to attach to the back. And by doing that, you cannot just print your first layer. But for me, I cannot get the first layer to be printed at 0 0.2 or even 0 0.3 width. So the reason why this circle is a lot smaller than what I have initially modeled it on Fusion 316 is that when filament comes down from the nozzle and printed on the surface, filament tend to expand because it's melted into a really high temperature. So when the filament comes down and make contact with the bed, the filament expands Bend a little bit. Let's say, for example, it's a 0.5 millimeters width. It might be 0.55 millimeters width because of the nozzle squishing to the bed at some parts. At some parts, it might be exactly 0.5, but some parts it's gonna be less. It's gonna be more. 
depends how level your bed is. And that reflects to the tolerance. If you have a really nice level bed, it will get 0.5 all around. The tolerance it might be good. But still, the filament will expand a little bit and ruin your tolerance. This part is printed laying flat like this. So it doesn't have that expandable for the filament. And the whole diameter is a little bit closer to what I have initially modeled it on Fusion 360. But the downside of this is that you can see that the top part here sags a little bit. And that can just easily be fixed by using like a plier and just stick it here. Just twist it a little bit and you will have near close perfect circle but for this you really can't do that you can do this and then the opening will be bigger but the layer are stacking on top of each other so let's say you have a bad layer stacking and it stacks one layer is out like this right so it's stacking like that when you put the filament in there the bottom part it will clear but then it will hit this part so imagine like this, so it will come and hit the part and you cannot push that thing through. If you just force it, it might break your 3D printed part and it'll be very bad. So for me, when I print vertical things like this, I tend to make the circle diameter a little bit bigger than when I print the circle horizontal like this. Same thing goes for this piece right here. This was printed standing upward like this and the circle fits the filament really well. This piece was printed laying flat like this, the circle going up vertically. And it's a very small circle, it might be like 1.6 millimeters. I initially modeled this as a 1.9 millimeter circle, but when it printed out, the hole is a lot smaller than what I have 3D really modeled it. And the reason for this is because, like I said before, the 3D printer material expand and the layer doesn't really stack well on top of each other on 3D printers. Even if you calibrate your 3D printer to the best ability, the layer of stacking will not be exactly perfect. Some layers will be off like this, like that. So you just really can't have perfect circle. But there is still ways of preventing that by playing with your tolerance. Just make the tolerance a little bit bigger. And another way is that if you have tools, drilling tools, you can drill through the hole and essentially make that circle to perfection. But sometimes people don't have those stuff like me. I don't have a 1.75 millimeters drill bit so that so I can just drill through the filament and make the hole perfect all the time. And maybe sometimes the hole is like way too big for that drill for that teeny tiny piece of drill. It doesn't go through all the way. You just need to adjust, play with your 3D printer, play with your slicer setting, and just pretty much experiment what your 3D printer is capable of in terms of tolerance. Every single 3D printer will be different, so there's no correct answer. If people are saying that, oh, this is the correct way to do it, this specific 3D printer has a 0.2 millimeters tolerance for everything. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. For example, my K1 Max, it has a really nice tolerance. I can do 0.1 millimeters tolerance on the K1 Max, but sometimes I need about 0.4 or even 0.5 tolerance. Depends on the application. But this will come as second nature. The more you do it, the more you will definitely know. Oh, for printing vertical like this, I need to make the hole a little bit bigger, about 2.1 millimeters diameter, in order for me to fit this 1.75 millimeters film in there. And sometimes you will be like, okay, I'm printing the circle like this, so I just need about 1.9 millimeters diameter for the circle, and my filament will fit perfectly and like I said all of these tolerance stuff is just based on your experience and the way you are printing your 3D print parts. This video is going a little bit longer than I anticipated so I will stop right here and if you still have more questions about tolerance and stuff like that for me I am still experimenting with tolerance because every project is going to be different and the tolerance will be different for all of them but hey I hope this video helps you know more a little bit about tolerance printing and knowing that printing this way and printing this way will affect circles tolerance i'll be greatly appreciated if you subscribe to this channel leave a like also comment down below on tolerance so that we can keep this thing going and learning more from each other anyway thank you so much for watching and as always keep on 3d printing